Hey babies. So as you guys know, a couple of weeks ago, um, I had to go to Atlanta and get my daughter. On April the 26th, 27th, Monday, I allowed my daughter to go with her family, her dad. He asked me, could he get her and take her out of town? Now, everybody knows how I am about my daughter. I really didn't want her to go out of town because I'm just leery. I'm just a mother, okay? So, y'all, his sister asked me, could she come? So, I said, yeah, because I'm not trying to really keep my baby out the life. But at the same time, I know my daughter's father always pulling some type of stunts, Okay. So he picked her up April 27th. Yes, Monday, 6.30. Pick my baby up. I'm nervous. No, they pick her up Sunday. I'll take that back. It's the 26th because the funeral was the 25th. So the 26th. So I allowed my child to go. Even though I felt a little iffy about the situation. But I thought it was just me being a mom, being overprotective of my baby. Okay. So I called Monday night. She had been gone since Sunday. So I didn't even call until Monday night. So when they picked her up, guys, on set on Saturday, on Sunday, when they picked her up, her family, her uncle, the daddy, they come pick her up. They reassured me that everything was going to be okay. She wasn't going to be around a girl that don't like me. You know, it's a whole bunch of drama with that. That's another one of the reasons because... The girl that he's with, she hate my guts. And I ain't never did anything to her. So that's a hard situation for a mother to be in in the first place. But I always get blamed for the stuff. Because, of course, the daddy's not going to say, I, I have been irresponsible for four years. And I never separated my both my child's mothers and made them stay in a place to where everybody get along. I just always let the second one try to do what she want to do. Keep me blocked out and all of that stuff. Just giving y'all a little bit of history on why I didn't want my baby to go down there. Mad you take you back to 2019 when me and her was in the shelter together. She almost got me put out the shelter. Just all kinds of stupid shit over a man that I ain't even with. First of all, over a man that I had a baby by first. Now, when I ain't doing nothing but speaking facts. So if anybody got a problem with me speaking facts, I don't know what to tell y'all, okay? It's not my fault that everybody go through stuff. It's not my fault that my daughter was here first. But like I said, she went lying to them people, telling everybody in the shelter I'm sleeping with her man. Then I almost got us put out and all of this stuff. So this is the reason why I didn't want my baby around this woman. So that's why I didn't want to let her go to Atlanta. So I'm going to tell y'all the truth why I didn't want to let her go to Atlanta. But her uncle and auntie assured me that she was going to be okay. So me being the mama that I am, I let her go. I called Monday. I checked on my daughter. They said she was good. Tuesday morning, I'm calling because they supposed to be going back to Atlanta Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning, I'm calling. He done blocked me out. Yes, you heard me right. He blocked me out. As soon as my daughter hit Atlanta Tuesday, her dad blocked me out. Mind you... Me and him didn't have no kind of argument, okay? So, imagine how your throat already feeling cut. But you know you got to ride this situation now. Imagine my baby's supposed to be home Friday because they got another funeral that Friday or something like that. So, my baby's supposed to be back home in a couple of days. So, then our auntie texts me back saying... Oh, yeah, because I had called the auntie trying to see if they had made it and everything. She telling me, oh, everything is okay. I'm like, okay, well, I'm just trying to. She telling me I'm calling too much. That's why he done blocked me out. First of all, how can you tell a mother that she calling too much when he ain't answering his phone and y'all have my child down there, first of all? I ain't even trip off that, okay? Because can't nobody tell me nothing that they ain't even going through, first of all. Because you don't even know nothing about situations like that. Let that be clear. So, point blank, period. He blocked me out right after my daughter got down there. Called him Wednesday. He answered the phone Wednesday. I got to call private, okay? Got to call my daughter private. Got to call her daddy private. Me and him didn't have no type of arguments or nothing, so I imagine how I'm feeling, girls. Okay. So, 
I talked to my daughter on Wednesday, April 29th. So I told her, all right, baby, I love you. You know, I'll see you when you get home. I mean, I told her, you'll be home in a few days. So Thursday, I'm calling her dad, trying to see what time should I expect her Friday. He tells me, I'm not, I'm not ready to bring her home. I'm not bringing her home. I'm her daddy. You don't do me like that. Blah, blah, blah. Woo, woo, woo. Mind you, I'm the custodial parent. Mind you, I didn't let this dude take my child all the way to Atlanta. Then you tell me that the uncle and the auntie who said they was going to be looking out for my baby never left St. Louis. And y'all say I'm dramatic. Y'all say I'm a drama queen. But right is right and wrong is wrong. Because I couldn't have never looked another mother in her face. And knowing I was in on some type of bullshit scheme about her child. And I'm sorry that I cussed, but that's how I feel about the whole situation. It was bullshit. It didn't have to go down like that, especially after I was nice. So, y'all, imagine how you feel when you blocked out. You got to call your daughter private. You've been calling all day. He ain't answered the phone. Then when he finally do pick up the phone, he going to tell you that he not bringing your daughter back home? So my heart racing, I got anxiety. Okay, I'm doing cool. So everybody know that I got an anxiety disorder. So this ain't did nothing but set my anxiety off. But I'm handling it and coping it the best way that I can. Now I'm getting pissed off at myself because I done let my child go down to Atlanta. And this dude just told me that the uncle and auntie is in St. Louis. He in Atlanta. And got me blocked out, bruh. And you know what, dude? You know darn well I didn't deserve that because I was a good mother and I let her come with you. Me and you was on good terms. That was the stupidest thing you could have ever did to me. So clearly you must have not wanted to ever see your daughter never, 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 ever again because you blocked me out. Then you told me you weren't going to let me see my daughter. Then you weren't answering the phone for three and four days trying to send me through mental anguish on purpose with your evil ass. That's why I didn't have nothing to say to you when I got my child. I didn't say anything. But you should be embarrassed because me and you wasn't on no type of bad terms. All you had to do was bring my child back home. And I would have let you get her again, bruh. So that's why I said this goes down in the in the in the dumbest world records book, the, the Guinness Book of Dummies. Because you shouldn't have never. Me and y'all gotta learn. Sometimes you don't never let nobody mess up nothing between you and your child's mother. But I believe you did that yourself. But everybody found it funny because I'm I'm texting the girlfriend. Telling her, can she talk to him? She blocked me from off the Instagram page. I'm texting the brother. I'm texting the auntie Friday. Ain't nobody texting me back. But it's awfully funny. Everybody was coming to his defense. Trying to convince me to get her. So now I'm feeling like y'all done tried to kidnap my child. So imagine what state of mind that puts me in as a mother. This is my five-year-old daughter. This is not the other daughter that I was talking about before. Mind you, it's May. I got my other daughter taken from me May the 8th, 2014. So here we is in May of 2020 in a pandemic coronavirus. And this nigga decides to take my daughter and tell me that he's not bringing her home. Okay, so I inboxed his daddy trying to let his daddy know what was going on. No, I really didn't want to get pop involved because they just lost their sister. He just put his daughter in the ground and I hadn't even been a week. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not even thinking Gabby's daddy going to remotely pull no stunt like this because I'm like, okay, he just want to spend time with his baby because he just lost his sister. Y'all, I'm trying to have a heart. Whole time, they con artisting me. Not the daddy. Daddy ain't having nothing to do with it. I just had to call the daddy and let him know what was going on. But the whole time, I'm feeling like I done been played. Y'all played the hell out of me. Y'all didn't have to do me like that. 
You get me, daddy? You didn't have to do me like that at all when I had let you see my baby. Who are you to take it up on you? To tell me when you bringing my baby home when we had already had an agreement and I'm the custodial parent. And I let you keep her for a whole week. All you had to do was the right thing. Bring my baby home. So now he tells me on Thursday, April 30th, he's not bringing my freaking daughter home. He's telling me he ain't bringing my daughter home. So mind you, I'm angry. I got anxiety. I got 50 million emotions going through me at five, 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 five times. At one time. All right. All right. So I had already prayed. I'm already feeling some type of way. Baby, give me some drink. I'm getting hot talking about this. I had already felt some type of way about it, so that's why I'm venting to you guys about this. Sometimes good people get played, and they always want to turn around and blame it on me. First of all, I ain't finna let nobody take another daughter. I want some soda. I ain't finna let nobody take another daughter. Now, that's some BS on any given day, okay? Because my, my first child got snatched wrong because I got anxiety. Y'all know that story. So here I am again with the same man from five years ago that said he would never do this to me. You finna kidnap my daughter too? It's finna be some problems. So, I had to ride it out the whole weekend. Nobody still ain't calling me back. I'm calling him, calling him, calling him, y'all. Don't know if my baby's safe or nothing. So the, the Georgia Police Department don't open until Monday. They didn't open until Monday where I could call an officer. Sorry, I'm getting hot talking about this. I had to call an officer. Baby. When I tell you, when I told the Georgia police what was going on, that my daughter was being kidnapped, I was blocked, didn't have an address on the daddy, because mind you, I didn't have the daddy address. I had the uncle address. I didn't have the daddy address. So, I don't have no address on my baby of where she's at. I'm blocked out, so I had to call the police. So, the police got their phone numbers and everything, and he verified what I said. So... The police officer that I talked to, he had left a message for them and let them know that it was going to be uh, kidnapping from what he was telling them. You know, telling the daddy that uh, the mama said that she was supposed to bring the baby back, blah, 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 from what I'm saying. So he said it sounded like kidnapping. So he gave him the benefit of the doubt because I was going to have to file a missing persons report. But the officer in Georgia still gave the daddy the benefit of the doubt. Okay, y'all, to go ahead and try to come through with the come, you know, before we had to put out an Amber Alert, basically. So I asked the officer, because he called and left a message, he still won't answer. So I asked the officer, I said, can I please get a safety check done? Because they found the brother address. What I had wasn't correct, but they found the brother's, the uncle's address. So I asked him, I said, could you please go do a safety check? She should be there with her uncle or something. And I told him, you know, because I haven't talked to my child. So mind you, y'all, since Thursday... April, the whatever. I've been crying. But I'm trying to be strong. But I'm crying at least once a day. It's the same month my other daughter got taken. Same month. Baby, so when they tell you the devil always try the same thing, same month my first child got taken who finna be 16, who was snatched away from me at nine years old. Here I am with my five-year-old in Georgia. He knew that's why I didn't want her to come. Then you blocked me out and I ain't being nothing but good to you after you done missed five birthdays, after you done missed five Christmases, and I still, after you barely work, I barely get child support. I only get child support every couple of months because you switch jobs all the time to get the free checks. But I don't care. I can't be responsible for your behavior. All I can do is answer for mine. And I'm still... Trying to work with you and give you the benefit of the doubt. So, long story short, the police officer called me right back. He found them. She hid the daddy was there. 
The uncle was there, they was there with my baby. I was so furious, I didn't want to talk to nobody. Cause by this time, I'm fuming. I don't want to talk to nobody. I just want to know when my baby gonna be home. They, they had just got back, so the auntie was like, they'll bring my baby back the weekend. Mind you, it's Monday. My baby was already supposed to be back Friday. So y'all mean to tell me I gotta panic out a whole nother week? Then sit up and worry if y'all gonna bring my baby home? No. I told them that wasn't good enough for me. I need, I need my daughter on before then. So she said, the earliest we can get it to you is next Monday. I said, that's not gonna work. She said, well, you could come all the way here and get it if you want to. I said, makes me no never mind. So the police officer said, well, when you come to get her? I said, I'm about to call the bus now. And that's what I did. I had to call the bus station, get out in the COVID, and catch the bus to go get my child in Atlanta. Took us 12 hours one way, 13 hours the other way. A 45-minute layover in Memphis. Then the second time coming back, it was a three-hour layover in Memphis because actually the drive... If it's an express bus, it really don't take that long to get to Atlanta. It wasn't a bad drive except for one of the buses. With the COVID, everything is off. All of the bus routes are a little bit different. You're getting dropped off in alternate places. But what a mother want to do for her child? Because, baby, I literally felt like Sally Fields in that movie, Not Without My Daughter. Because I wasn't coming back without my daughter. For real. Now, one of y'all already done got that off on me. I ain't finna let another one get that off on me. No, I'm too good of a person. Always trying to see the benefit of the doubt. And I ain't trying to cause Brad no problem. He just lost his sister. That's just like his mama. They acquired a six. She the only girl. They just lost their mother six years ago. So do y'all think I'm finna try to cause my daughter father any problems? And he knew that. I believe that kids need their daddies. But my daughter father that made the situation so bad. So I got there. We got there Tuesday about 3 o'clock in the morning. I checked into the hotel and everything. So I texted the uh, sister at like 6 and let her know we was there. She didn't get it until about 10 or something. They brought, they brought my baby right to me like she said because I had texted her Tuesday night. Uh, asked, Monday night asking her when I got there. Would they mind bringing my baby downtown? So she said that that would be okay. But y'all, that was one of the most frustrating, scariest. Thank God um, I have somebody, I got a good friend that rode down there with me. Because we had already talked about if my daughter father had pulled the scheme. She had already told me don't worry about it. She would ride down there with me to get my baby, you know. And I just want to thank my friend. I had a couple of friends who had my back. And y'all know who y'all are. And I just want to say that I thank you. Because if I would, my, 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 uh, Bam Bam, my 11 year old, she was so in the uproar. But she stayed strong for me. She had already told me. She said, Mama, I'm not about to have no another sister take it from me. And I told her, you damn right, because I'm going to do everything I can to get my baby back, you know, because I can't see the look on Bam's face again. I can't take that, you know. I can't take that with my own heart. My five-year-old out here kidnapped. I don't have an address on the daddy that I was nice enough to work with you, do and let you take her. So now, I'm at the point now, I don't care what nobody say. I don't even want to hear his voice. Right now, his voice triggers me very bad. And I don't know how to explain it. People with anxiety, certain stuff just trigger us, and it trigger us. Meaning, I don't care if I ever see Atlanta again, and I wanted to live there. I don't care if I ever see Georgia again. I don't want to hear from him right now. I don't want him to deal with her at all because he did it like that. That was too much on me. I'm over here in my lane just trying to be on some positive vibes, just trying to make it the best I can. 
And then to turn around and you, this dude, finna kidnap your daughter? Because what else was you finna do? You had me blocked out. First of all, who blocks the mama out? And all I was doing was calling to check on my baby. You knew I wasn't gonna bother you like that. But you did exactly, you did exactly what I knew you were gonna do. Apparently, maybe that's why I was scared the whole time. So, ain't no sense of getting mad or ever asking for. I mean, because right now, you don't even have to call and check on or nothing like that because you left a very sore spot. You showed me that you cannot be trusted. And we have a child together. So you cut my throat. So you cut my throat. So clearly you don't care about your daughter if you cut her mother's throat who had never did nothing from you. Which clearly shows you so consumed with evil. You got some issues going on. Because apparently you like to cause hurt to people that ain't did nothing to you. And that shows the signs of a problem. I didn't do nothing but try to send positive vibes your way because your sister had passed. I loved your sister because she welcomed me into the family when I first met her. She talked, made me something to eat, made us, made me and the baby feel welcome. She welcomed my other daughter. That was my, my baby. I loved her. You know, I had a lot of love for her. So the fact that he had just lost her, I would never be like no mean bitch to him or nothing like that. So for you to blow this situation all up out of control and do me like how you did, I, don't, I just don't have anything else to say about it. And so women, if you feel people, but I can say women because I'm not a man. If you feel some type of way about the other parent, if you have a situation similar to mine, you struggling with should you let your child go or should you not let your child go, just use your own judgment because sometimes these people, these men can get very mean and evil. And I'm not men bashing. I love men. I love the black man, okay? But hey, I done had a few instances to where things ain't worked out all the way, you know? So I'm not mad or bitter about anything. I'm a good person and I don't like to be done wrong over no bull crap. That's all I'm saying, baby. None more, none less. Point blank, period. I ended up getting my daughter back. It wasn't no hassle. They brought her back to me. I didn't say nothing to him. I didn't clown. I, because you know what? That's not even where my head was. I wanted to just get my daughter and get the hell out of there. That's all I wanted. Just give me my daughter. I don't got nothing to say. You ain't answered my call in almost a whole week, bruh. So apparently... You trying to cause me mental anguish or something, but whatever, whatever your motive was, congratulations is all I'm going to say. Whatever your motive was, congratulations. I wouldn't wish that pain on the woman that hates me. I wouldn't wish that pain on my enemy because I'm not her. She ain't my enemy. She don't like me. But I wouldn't wish that pain on any mother to have to sit there and be blocked out and your daughter is eight hours away. In the same month that your other daughter got taken because you got anxiety. So in my mind, I'm thinking, oh my God, is he finna try to do the same thing to me as my oldest daughter father did? I'm not going for it. I will die fighting. I'm not playing. I'm, and I'm not playing. So please stop coming for my kids. Because I don't know no mother that won't fight to the death for her about her kids. Whether she got to get an attorney, blood, sweat, tears, and she would have had to catch four planes and 50 buses. A mother is going to get to her child. So I just wanted to share that story time with you guys, y'all. I'm still, I'm coping with it. God has given me strength, but the, him, I just can't deal with him right now. And I, 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 it's hard, not hard not to deal with him, but it's hard for me not to feel like a mean person because I had to cut her daddy off. But I'm content with my situation because I feel like he can't be trusted and he did it to himself. 
So if you did it to yourself and you didn't show me that you can't be trusted, ain't nothing I can do about that. You brought that on you. So I had to make peace with it. I love you guys. Hope you enjoyed this story time. Thoughts from the Disheveled Diva.